Amen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, can you see him? Is this on? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is good. God is awesome. God, God is a mighty God. He's an awesome God. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's given me a testimony, you know, to the glory of God. And my testimony tells people that there's no such thing as a hopeless case. You know, because if there was such a thing as a hopeless case, then you would be looking at him. But by the grace of God and by the power of the Christ that lives in me, you know, there is no such a thing as a hopeless case. You know, there's hope. And that's the hope that we want to bring into the streets, you know, into the highways and into the byways with the gospel, the good news. You know, thanks, Paul, for, for asking us to come and share. I'll share a wee bit about my experience with street evangelism and also Broken Chains. I'm privileged and an honour uh, to get a job at Broken Chains over eight months ago. You know, and uh, I love that job. You know, I'm able to share the gospel uh, in a, a, re a real way, feeding people, uh, clothing people, uh, putting £10 or £5 in their electricity, showing love, you know, because James says, didn't he? He says, if you walk by a person and you say, be blessed, God bless you, and you do nothing for that person, what good is that? Faith without works is dead. And I agree with you, brother, it's through Jesus alone that you're saved, but also love looks like something, you know. So I'm privileged to be Andrew, uh, Andrew Grace here today, a, a member, a volunteer at Broken Change as well. He brings, he, he, he's a part of the Gideons, so that we've got Bibles for everybody that comes in, so that we can read the Word of God and share the Word of God with them also, because it's great, you know, the, the social systems feed people and they do all these things and praise God for that. But it's good to share Jesus with them also, isn't it? Because that's the only thing that can really change your life. You know, they can do so much and that's great. And to save somebody from you know, having somewhere to stay, or, oh, that's great. But truly, only, only real life comes when the Spirit of the Lord comes into a person's heart and brings life and all its fullness. Jesus is amazing. We have a great message. So I'll share... Uh, I've still got 15 minutes, aye, aye, just, uh, aye, so, uh, street evangelism, I got saved, I'm not going to go into my past, I was a wild drug dealer and all sorts of things and uh, very much involved in violence and everything, God delivered me for it, he has delivered us for the power of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins through his blood. So that's my story, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And uh, I wasn't shy when I was selling drugs to people back in the day. You know, I wasn't shy. So when I got Jesus, I, sh I thought, I want to share him with people because he was the answer, you know, he was the answer. So. Back then, uh, I was at the Bethany Hall when it opened up, was a Bretham Hall, you know, I've got good, good links with, with the people at the town head down there as well, you know, the, but the Bethany got used for, for years, you know, for good work, for God, and, uh, but there was a wee man over here and his name was Clarence, and he was a street preacher. You know, he went out and he was from South Africa and he used to have a lovely spirit about him and he would go out and he would worship the Lord in the streets and he would preach, preach the gospel. And uh, I met him through the Bethany Hall with Alec Muir and that and he asked me, would you like to come to the streets? And I'd been saved and got out of that lifestyle and started seeking God and the things of the spirit. Reading the word, I couldn't read. I could not read. I was dyslexic. And I, I, read, I read in the Bible, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And God done a miracle, because he wanted me to read. Because if I read, I can read about Jesus. I can read about his power. I can read about what he's done for us. And I started to do that. And I got a desire to share Jesus with people. And when I met Clarence, he said, would you like to come to the streets? So I went to the streets. And the way I done it and back then, there was a boy come down for the Bible college and he done a, like you are doing the day, praise God, a kind of outlay on evangelism, the do's and don'ts. If there's two of you, don't start arguing with each other. That's not right. No, especially if somebody's there, you know, being union, you know, being union. You know, obviously, if you think the guy's rang and he's maybe a new guy, tell him later on. 
By the way, the word doesn't say that. You better not tell them that. But have a union when you're in evangelism, when you're in the streets, you know. And so I, t- I took that in and I went to the streets. The best way I think to learn evangelism is on the streets. To have a desire. Clarence told me you shouldn't be on the streets. Well, it, it wasn't meaning you shouldn't be on, but he said to go on the streets you should at least spend two hours a week in prayer. At least. So you're filled with the Spirit. So you've got the Word of God burning in you. Jeremiah said it was like fire shot up in my bones. You know? And, and what the brother said also, don't go in there, you are going to hell. I speak to people about hell. You know, I was on the streets this morning for an hour in Kilmarnock. And my question to people was, we were getting tracks out my pals. Got a church down there, John McInnes. Uh, and the, my, my question to people was, some of them would take tracks, but I love engaging with people. Seeing evangelism, it's about engaging with people. I love standing up and preaching about Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. I love it. Whatever. You know, the Lord, they're reading for the word. You know, let me share this. I was up in Perth one day at a, a conference. Sorry for jumping about, Ian, but I was at a day that I, I, I know the Lord's told me to focus today and help me, Jesus. <laughs> Holy Ghost, help me. <laughs> no, it's just coming out the way it's coming out, but I was up in, at a conference on evangelism. A, da- a guy, David, David Hathaway, I think his name was, and he goes all over the world. He got 10 years for smuggling Bibles into Russia and all that. He was fired up, you know, and he's seen all sorts of Jews saved and just a heart for evangelism. And I was fired up. I was with my pastor. I go to a church up in Eldersley now, you know, I have done for years. And I was fired up and I'm like, I want to go to the streets today. You know what I mean? And we went out in the streets and we were just walking because I was taking time with my pastor. And as I said, I'd been in the streets with Clarence, the African guy, before, and learned a wee bit. And I remember, this has been led by the Spirit, I believe. I remember this wee uh, gypsy guy was up preaching, and he was just preaching the Word of God. And we started just being involved with him, and started uh, getting out tracks and everything. And he sa- I said, could I go up and testify? And he let me go up and testify. And I started sharing my testimony. And I just felt to say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's real. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive like that. And this girl was standing. And she's looking at me. She's got two wee kids. And she come up. I said, are you OK? I jumped down. He was up in his wee box. I jumped down and I went and spoke to her. I said, is everything OK? She said, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? She said, my wee boy, one of the wee kids wasn't well, right? They let us pray for the wee kid. But they said, this wee boy, the wee boy at six, just walked round the corner and started saying to me, is God real, Ma? Is God real? Is God real? And I walked round the corner and you're shouting, he's alive, he's real, he's real. I see he is real. And he loves you. And I was able to pray with the last and pray for the wee kid. And I said, God used you the day, wee man. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, God has ordained praise. That wee boy had this desire to know God, but because he feel the leading of the Spirit to share, to share the word, and that wee man was already preaching, and because I'd heard, you know, and that's it. I, I believe to be led of the Spirit is a great thing. You know, as the Bible says, as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. But to share about Clarence, uh, he taught, he, the best way I learned was on the streets doing it. And I just shared with people, I shared my testimony and stuck to that at first. Jesus has changed me. I was a drug addict. He came into my life. He's real. And then I would speak to them about where do you think you would be if you died today? Where would you be? Because the Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't say you're a sinner and I'm, I'm saved. I say I was. I was maybe worse than you. But Jesus says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Where do you think you'll be today? And then I say, but what the good news is, Jesus died for you, you know, and share that way. Uh, so I, I love street evangelism and encourage the young people here to get a heart for evangelism. See, the more you do it, see, you, you, you think, oh, I couldn't do it. But see if you get fired up, really get into the spirit and, and get filled with the word, as the brother said, then you want to do it. Because you can't hold it in because it's up, it's real. If you had a cure for cancer, you wouldn't want to keep it to yourself, would you? You would want to tell people. And how much more is a cure? Jesus Christ, his salvation. 
He's resurrected power. I'm going to share, because I want to share about broken chains. I'll just share about the day on the streets, because I've loved the streets and I've not been out for a wee while, consistently. But I feel I'm coming into a new season again. Hallelujah. I've got a good job settled down in my life, my wee kiddies and everything. You know, I, I felt alive the day. No, and I thank for, for, for asking me here, we use brothers and sisters, but I felt alive in the street the day. I was with my friend and wee Gordon Isaac up there. So great being out tracks, but I had three divine appointments. One of them was a guy that had really hurt violence with knives, had really done him damage, the guy, years ago when I was a bad boy. And I'd prayed about it for years. Most people had, most people had made amends to through, through Jesus and through working a 12-step program that I'd made amends. But this was one I thought would maybe try and attack me because of what I'd done to him when I was a violent drug dealer. I'd done a, a, a hurt him. And I met him the day there was two addicts and I started speaking to them and just shared Jesus with them. And they didn't want to know at first and then they, they heard who, I, who used to be and I was able to tell them about Jesus. And the guy came up and I shared with him. I was able to make amends to him when they went away. I said, I'm really, really sorry for what I've done for you, to you. And I gave him an invitation to my pal's church. And he says his life wrecked, the guy. You know, so that was a divine appointment. I've been praying about that for years. I walk by, I walk by, go on prayer. I love going prayer walks like Jesus. Go prayer walks if you need to or get into your closet. That's where the power is. I walk by that place and I see the things I've done and I've wept over things I've done. I'm not there proud saying I was this. But hallelujah for the mercy of God. And I was able to share with that man the day. There's hope, and I'm really sorry for what I've done. Another one was a wee girl that I'd prayed with in a 12-step meeting a few weeks ago and tried to, tried to lead her to Jesus. And she said she's felt some change. So it was another appointment with her. She's looking up the Bible and getting an inv invitation to church, which is great. And another one, one was a woman who is engaging with people. This woman has had four sons who's addicts. One of them has been to Teen Challenge, and the other one, our, our man had been saved years ago. So they are divine appointments, I believe, to share the word of God. I'll speak about broken chains. Evangelism's great. I think we should, every chance we get a chance to speak about Jesus, we should do it. But do it in a way, you know, the, the word of God says, he that winneth souls is wise. Pray for that wisdom. No go in with hobnail boots on, Bible bashing people. Try and win people. Win them for the Lord. Have compassion. And I can speak about hell, but I'll tell you, I don't want to speak about hell looking down on people. I want to speak about hell saying, he loves you that much, he doesn't want to go there. He loves you. Jesus died, he was broken, he was bruised, he was battered for you, that you wouldn't go there if you come to him and you open up your heart to him. He'll come into your heart. The Word teaches it. You judge you need to do believe and really start to come to him, turn away for your sins. He's an awesome God. So, broken chains, but eight months ago, eh, I'd, I'd shared it, broken chains. It's an organisation of different churches, non-denominational, that love Jesus Christ. And I, I get birthed years ago through Alec Muir, who got the Bethany Hall, Nicky Cruz, who Teen Challenge, eh, come over to the Magnum and it got filled with people and what happened was off the back of that broken chains was birthed because a lot of people went to rehab and everything like that. So that's how it happened but Alec wasn't involved in it for so long but what happened was at the Magnum he said does anybody want to stand up and do something that was about drug addiction? I know Ian's done some great work with drug addiction you know and people stood up and wanted to get involved. That's where it was birthed for at first. So these people have been running it in air. It's run at the Holy Trinity Church in air. And But years ago it was just for drug addiction. Now it's for everybody. It's for people with mental health problems. It's for people that are lonely. It's for people that are addicted. It's for anybody. And we get the Holy Trinity Halls and they're opened up on a Tuesday and on a Saturday, a Sunday, sorry. We have a gospel service on a Sunday where we testify. Uh, maybe somebody will come, Ian shared not that long ago, and share their story, bring one of the boys. The boy spoke very well that was through his rehab. And it gives hope 
to the people that come. There's about maybe 40 people there on a Sunday and we give them a meal. We feed them. We get a two-course meal and uh, there's all volunteers and it's all denominations. Any of want to come, the work that you are doing are great, but any of want to come, you are more than welcome. Even to come and see. We, we look all the time for volunteers because it's all volunteers. I'm a part-time paid, paid, paid worker, but... Uh, we, we don't get any funding for, for the government of that because we preach the gospel, you know. Uh, we've seen a lot of people die recently. You don't know about that. And this, this sort of evangelism with the homeless and with the poor is about relationships, I believe. It's about building the relationships with these people, letting these people know that they're valued, letting these people know that they're loved, letting these people know that God loves them and we have an opportunity to do that. On a Tuesday, there's a Bible discussion. And I, I've, I've only come in eight months ago, remember. I just used to testify. And then I get the job, praise God. And it's amazing. There's maybe 30 folk there unsaved. And we open up the Word of God. And the way Alec done it, the guy I, I came, came after, is it's about them trying to understand it. You know, somebody teaches, but they read a portion of Scripture. And then it's about them trying to understand it, getting a wee bit out of it. So that's what we do on a Tuesday. And if anybody's interested after that, Andrew will maybe go up and show them the Gideon's Bible, show them where all the stuff is in it. We've seen, we've seen one of the boys that came at the same time as me is now off his methadone. He was on methadone, drugs and everything. He's eight months clean and sober. There's my man there. He, he's, he's, uh, he's filled with God's spirit. He's saved and he's off everything. He's now at the Prince's Trust uh, as a mentor in the Prince's Trust. He's doing his SVQ level two and encouraging to do that. He gets his sleeve rolled up and gets a servant attitude at broken chains. That's what we encourage. See, we don't bring them in, just keep them like victims. See, as soon as they, they, we see them making progress in the law, that even, even as a helper, we, we try and encourage them to do that. Because when you go to your cell, you know, and start doing something for somebody else, it really helps as well. So, broken chains is kind of for anybody. And the beautiful thing about it is it's all denominations. We've got people that are Pentecostal, people that are been through brethren all their days, and maybe, you know, like Andrew and that, and we've got Baptists, we've got everybody. But see, the beautiful thing about it is we all love Jesus because <laughs> we're the body of Christ. You know, we all love Jesus and there's a camaraderie, there's a connection in the spirit there. And we love these people that come and we're able to share the love of God with them, you know, in a practical way. You know, uh, the first week I came, there was a, a girl came and I was through the back there and she was just sober and clean off her drugs. And we were sharing Jesus with her and she was weeping, asking Jesus into her life. A week and a half later she died. So that's the kind of reality that the, the realms were moving in. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of folk come in and they sell drugs and bad things. You don't know what it's like and then they'll talk about you and blame you because you try and bar them. It's not easy. But I'll tell you, see, when you see that one, I spoke last week, he left the 99 to go for the one. And when he go to pour it up in his shooters and he carried it home and he said, Rejoice with me, because the sheep that was lost is now found. And there was rejoicing in heaven, you know. So that's what we'd keep doing. And God is love, you know. God is love. And that's what the ethos of, of broken chains, you know. God is love. But nevertheless, <laughs> uh, we want to share Jesus with them as well. And uh, we have a privilege to do that. And as I say, it's not just a one-man show, it's a, it's a group of people from all different denominations that, that bring that together, and I think that's the beauty of how it works. But uh, I just want to encourage these people, you know, young ones, seek the Lord. Jesus is absolutely amazing, you know. I know you maybe grew up in Christian homes, and I thank God for that, you know. I thank God for that. I, I'll be speaking at a funeral next Friday, a boy. That, that died, I grew up with him, do you know, and he's away again. Another boy died, he came to the Lord recently, and his addiction, you know, he died. So thank God that he's have grew up in Christian homes. But, you know, for us Christians, and even the, the young ones here, you know, to have that passion for to share our faith with others, you know, I believe that's what this day's, around, day, day's about, you know, to 
I know myself in my own life. It's easy to get busy for God and know how it works systematically. But see if I'm in God's presence and in his word and broken before the Lord, broken and contrite heart, these the Lord will not despise. But we can get that used to doing it. Do you know what I mean? But I know I'm a lot more compassionate. I've got a lot more love for people when the Spirit of the Lord's in control of me, you know, other than just knowing what to do, you know. So please, I encourage you all, young ones, to seek God. You know, I know your parents have probably taught you, but see that passion you can get yourself. Jesus isn't a disappointment. He's never, ever let me down, and uh, he'll never, ever let us down if we trust him. And you know, the streets, the streets are, you know, the, 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 the Bible says the, the fields are ripe unto harvest. But the labourers are few there for pray to the Lord of the harvest. They may send out labourers. Send and that's it. See when you go into these streets and you see, you know, some of them maybe say to you, I've got my own religion, son. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm, I, I prayed with a wee Catholic woman down the town the day. I was sharing, sharing Jesus with her. And she says, I have I'm alright, son, I'm a Catholic. I said, Catholic, Protestant, it doesn't matter. Are you born again? Do you know Jesus in your heart? She went, mm, 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 and I said, but he loves you. Know him in your heart. And she went, well, I said, I'm not against Catholic. I said, there was a kind of Catholic renewal years ago. I watched it in the telly last night. I said, but if you know Jesus deep in there, and you ask him, the priest, I'm not just talking about the priest, Jesus in your heart. And she was like, mm. I said, can I say a prayer for you? And I said, a prayer. Hopefully the Lord will speak to that wee woman. I believe he has, but make that good. You know, precious souls, precious souls. It is about precious souls. So uh, I hope I've not flipped about too much and you've got something that I would have said. Uh, anybody would like to know about broken chains? I've got tracks with my testimony in it. And anybody want to, you know, help out broken chains, even by prayer, keep praying for us. And I'll pray for the work that you, dear brothers, are doing. Uh, but if you would want to volunteer, if anybody would want to help out in any way, as I say, we're only supported by, by Christians alone, and we want to keep it that we can show Jesus his love. Because all the other things are great, but it's keeping it, you know, with the, the first thing first, Jesus at the centre. You know, so thanks very much for inviting me, brothers. And I'm praying with, with some of the brothers here, and, you know, I'm, I'm believing to get led by the Spirit in that, to see, you know, if somebody's hungry for God, if somebody has the Spirit, then they're my brother. I'm realising that more and more, because that's what it says in the Bible, didn't it? I know your denomination, your doctrine's good, that's all good, but the body of Christ is Jesus at the head, and as if we have the Spirit of the Lord, he says, if you don't have the Spirit of the Lord, then you're no his, but if you have the Spirit of the Lord, then you're my brother, and we can talk about Jesus, and we can light up like puggies, and then we can share them, we can share them with others, share them with others. Share them with others, that's, that's what I want to share. God bless you.